Front Towards Gamer. We're here in PAX Day 2. Uh, kind of secluded a little bit away from the showroom hustle, but uh, I got Laura with Wizards of the Coast with me today to talk a little bit about uh, Dungeons & Dragons, as many of us throughout the ages have been playing. <laughs> oh yeah, um, for decades, in yeah. many cases. A long time. I mean, I still have friends that are playing 1 point, or oh, yeah. is he playing 1 or 2.5? 2.5. So he's, he's back in the old, where you're rolling the four cider for your hit points. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. um, but uh, I know that you guys have a lot of stuff coming out. Um, you're working on Next. Um, you worked into the, uh, the Command series with Dungeon Command. And then, of course, you're always still putting out supplements. Um, what what can you tell our viewers that would you know kind of strive to get them back into these kind of things? Because it's a game that's really eternal, but I it's, think it's as people age, they tend to forget about it, and they need that reminder. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, uh, to your point, hopefully that will for anybody who's not currently playing uh, to bring them back in, and for those who are playing, a variety of ways in which to engage with the brand. So, what we have going on right now is uh, the Rise of the Underdark campaign. Um, it's a story that spans all the way from, it began in May of this year and will continue to the end of the year. Um, and it's the story of Lul, the Demon Queen of Spiders, and her attempt to take over the surface world uh, of Faerun in the fantasy setting of the Forgotten Realms yep. and essentially turn it into everlasting darkness uh, because as you know, her uh, people, the drow, they live in the Underdark um, and they essentially want to take over the surface world. So. The narrative is all about her attempt to do that and sending out her drow minions. And we're inviting um, players and adventurers to help fight them back. Um, and there's a variety of ways in which you can participate with the story. So we have a whole suite of products and programs this entire year that all speak to that narrative and tell their own individual part of the story. And, and it's, I know that, uh, going back to the point of how it's, you're always trying to draw people back in, uh, especially when you, you're entering in Forgotten Realms. Yes. I mean, that whole world, you know, Salvatore, and then, you know, Drizzle it. I never say that name wrong, I never say it right. Um, but, you know, his lore is so thick and, yes. and just so, he's so engrossing. I mean, if you really look at that series of books, and especially how many, you know, he's touched, yes. it's just, you know, the, the body of the work can almost resolve right. that in him. But then yeah. you have, you know, these supplements like, you know, going back into the Underdark, Yep. That's something that people are necessarily familiar with. Yes. So there's a lot of history there. Yeah. To be sure, and also uh, further to that point, R. A. Salvatore does have a new novel as part of this campaign, of course, with Dritzt Dorden being the most iconic Drow character really of all time. Um, so um, that new novel came out on August 7th, and it's called Caron's Claw. Uh, but there are a lot of other ways that you can engage with the product. I mean, you were asking how someone who's newer to the brand can can get into it and really experience that story even without the experience or the knowledge or the lore. And there's many easy ways to do that. Uh, D&D Encounters is a great example of that. It's an in-store play program. Uh, it runs on Wednesday nights. All you have to do is go up to our website and find a, a participating store near you. And you can literally drop in any Wednesday. It's an ongoing narrative, but you can drop in and out easily. And I'm sure there'd be a friendly DM there to help guide you into it. And you would get the basics. Um, actually, you'd get all the detail of the story. Encounters is a great way to get it. Yeah. And on that note, I mean, if you're looking to even, because I know, like, I live in a remote area myself, so finding a shop is, our nearest shop is, like, 38 miles away. Yeah, that's a challenge. So, but um, if for people that don't want to jump into the complexity, they can always pick up something like the Red Box, which that was a resurgence of, yep. of the old format. Yes, yep. Yeah, that was meant to, to provide a whole self-contained um, experience in a box and provide all, anything you would need to know to, to basically uh, learn the basics of the game and run through a few simple adventures. Um, but people can also look to things, um, if they're not familiar with RPG play, uh, such as our new line, Dungeon Command, which you mentioned. This is a brand new line for us, and uh, these first two faction packs came out in July of this year. One of them, of course, is drought themed with uh, the Sting of Lolf. Um, this is a great, um, it's a head-to-head -head, uh, miniature skirmish game. Um, so you're playing head-to-head -head against an opponent, it's fast, it's got, it comes with pre-painted plastic miniatures and set packs so you know exactly which warband you're getting. Um, and what people do is each player would pick up a faction pack and uh, play against their opponent, but you can also mix and match the faction packs to really optimize your warbands. Um, additionally, you can use the minis, of course, in tabletop RPG play if you'd like. Um, but we also provided stat cards in, the, in this product for all the miniatures so that they're playable with our adventure system of board games. Our adventure system line, which includes 
Castle Ravenloft and Wrath of Shardalon and The Legend of Drizzt, um, which are also great ways to sort of learn the basics of RPG play um, if you don't want to just necessarily jump, jump into a campaign because those board games actually feel quite a bit like uh, tabletop RPG play. Right, right. Uh, they're just, it's just a DM-less experience, yeah. essentially. To me, those were kind of a tip of the hat to uh, like Hero Quest when that came out a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, it's very self-contained, yeah. but someone can just pick it up out of the box and, and go with it. it. And it's it, a cooperative, it's a cooperative experience. So it has that that feeling that you would get out of a D and D campaign as well, versus a, a competitive uh, board game experience. Right. And the nice things about these is you don't necessarily have to do, you know, because a lot of this stuff can be cost prohibitive for people. Right. That's just the way it works. Yeah. But like the nice thing about these is you can pick up one and run with it. And, and they're so versatile with everything else, you know, throwing it into Ravenloft, throwing it into your pre-existing games. Yes. I mean, especially if you're not willing to sit there for hours upon hours and learn dry brushing technique to do your own exactly. model. Exactly, who has the time? Yeah, I mean, there you go. It's a nice yeah. way, nice easy way to get in there, get involved. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's one thing that I thought that your whole campaign lately has been great. I mean, ever since fourth edition, to get people back in there. Yeah, I mean, our goal is to provide uh, many ways for people to engage, cross category, cross platform, but have a, a strong, compelling story that's that connective tissue um, that allows people to have shared experiences. So, you know, maybe you're playing the tabletop RPG, but maybe I'm playing Dungeon Command, but we're still experiencing that drought. We're still having and uh, building that sense of community, um, which is which has been wonderful. Um, I do want to point out this product for those people who are um, interested in, in our, the RPG play um, because. Because the entire campaign is about the drow and, and their uprising, this really um, book, this book, the source book contains everything you would ever need to know about the race, um, about the city of Menzo Baranzin, um, which is the you know the biggest, most iconic, um, infamous city in the Underdark. Um, it details the race and, and the factions and the way they have a matriar matriarchal society with the drow priestesses and lol. Um, so this is uh, for both players and DMs, a great source book. And that's always been a great thing. You, yeah. you can pick up a player's handbook and just read, you know, the depth of the lore of the characters, yeah. you know, why they choose the, these religion standpoints. Exactly. And that's a great touch. I mean, especially when you have these huge universes. I mean, you even have, you know, the the novel tie-in for, like, more towards the, the video game style side. Um, so you're not necessarily stepping into Forgotten Realms for that part. But it's very enriching, very... There's people that will just pick those up and read them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this book is full of just you know wonderful lore and, and flavor content. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned the video games. Um, Dungeons and Dragons Online also has a draw, uh, there a connection to this campaign. In that, uh, in June of this year, they released uh, their Menace of the Underdark expansion, in which um, case players can actually um, at higher levels travel into the Forgotten Realms um, and make sure that, and fight back Lolf in her attempt to take over everything essentially. So, um, yeah, um, multiple product categories, um, uh, all sharing that same theme is, um, is what we're striving for. And looking forward, we'll continue to, you know, have our focus on story and, and themes as well. Yeah, and I do like, too, how you're able to tie back uh, the most recent series back into Neverwinter. So you're kind of throwing in all directions trying to, you know, bring that community together. Yep. It's a really nice touch. It's it's. It's to me, it's a hard thing to see companies try to do nowadays is yeah. integrate all their pro their projects into one right. mass Especially community. Especially when you have multiple product offerings and in product categories and platforms. Yep. So it just takes a lot of uh, cross coordination, communication, collaboration, <laughs> <laughs> making sure there's continuity. Yeah. And is is there anything that you can say about what's we, what we can look forward to as this wraps up? I know that you do these huge events like Gen Con, you guys did that nice, you tied in the city with uh, eight or nine different spots. We did, we did. And then you were giving away like uh, exclusive dice we were. For, for, you know, just that time. Yep. Um, do you guys plan to do more of that kind of stuff as the, you know, as we go into the next adventure, are we going to go into yeah. like more depth and, and some other section? So what you will find is uh, we do want to continue to focus on story. Um, and tying things together thematically. So um, you can look for uh, this type of offering uh, going forward in future years. I don't want to spoil anything in terms of uh, what that story will be. Um, but uh, similar to what we did at Gen Con, we actually have here at PAX Prime uh, some similar activities where you can head over to the gaming hall, uh, experience uh, Dungeon Command or, or d d Next or d, &D Encounters. Um, and we actually have beanies that you can get instead of the uh, collectible dice. Um, they're 
I think there's one under the table by your legs. Uh, they're great beanies that light up, and they're they're the ultimate uh, underdark accessory. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it lights up. Oh, where's the trigger? Yeah, you have to turn it inside out. So. Ah, we'll mess with it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and and what can you say about next? I, I mean, I know that it's been a huge community involved, you know, trying to get people. It's like, hey, what what are you doing? What makes your game special? How can we help that? Yeah, it's been um, incredible. We've had such a wonderful response. We're so thankful uh, for the community participation. Um, as we announced at Gen Con in our uh, D and D, the future of D and D keynote address, um, you know, over seventy-five thousand people have signed up wow. for the official playtest. Um, we we ask people or recommend that they use the official sign up process so that we can send them the surveys and actually capture all the feedback. Um, we are taking in a ton of feedback, which has been helpful for us as we continue to iterate on new playtest packets, um, so people can actually see that their input is impacting, um, you know, the direction of the playtest materials, and it's just been wonderful, and we're just so thankful for community involvement. I, I, I'm really thankful that you're doing that. A lot of people are like, well, you know, the new one just came out, and this and that, but yeah. what you got to do is, you know, get people involved in it's, you have to, in a way, give them what they want. Yeah. Not necessarily give them the whole bag, but. Right. <laughs> well, we're all playing D&D at the yeah. end of the day. And it's time that we all came back to the table, put our differences on, you know, what our addition preferences aside, um, and get back to what, what the game is all about, which is telling great stories around the table. And so it, our goal is to get to a place where we have a nice, simple, you know, streamlined core rule set that has the flexibility and modularity that uh, you know DMs want or need for their party, for their um, their campaign, and then players can play the, the play style that they want. So we don't have to be divided by by rules. Right, and we shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time thank with you for me. Thank you for having me. I, I do appreciate it. Um, look forward to do some more coverage. Uh, until next time, folks.